Each year, the auto industry manufactures over 200 models of vehicles. Technological advances in power systems, structural technology, and vehicle safety systems add challenges to the critical goal of victim extrication. This constant change requires professionals to stay alert for the hazards associated with these complex responses. Keep in mind, the actions taken by the first arriving units often create a blueprint for success. Today we're going to cover five subjects for auto extrication. Securing of the vehicle, engine company hand tool use, sidewall removal, side air curtains, and roof removal. As you approach the vehicle, keep in mind, look, listen, and secure. Look for any hazards. Listen for signs of high pressure leaks. Secure the vehicle from movement. Always try before you pry. You got a fluid leak in the Securing the ignition while avoiding the airbag deployment zones, this vehicle is equipped with a push button ignition, which also means there is a key fob remote that if found, should be removed from the vehicle. This the remote is being roof. placed on the roof. In scanning the vehicle for airbags, always communicate to other team members any signs of undeployed airbags. Airbags are still intact. Using a long-handled tool to apply the parking brake also helps avoid the airbag deployment zones. This process of look, listen, and secure, while done initially, continues throughout the incident. Often, doors can be jammed by sheet metal that can be moved by hand tools carried by engine companies. In this video, we demonstrate moving the decorative trim and relieving the pressure off the latch while opening the door. A spring-loaded center punch, or halligan, can be used to break and clear the glass. Avoid using a gloved hand to clear the remaining glass. By understanding the steps needed to perform this task, multiple actions can go on. The firefighter in the front is removing the B-post trim and inspecting for any seatbelt components, airbag components, while the firefighter in the back is doing a vertical spread within the window frame to provide a purchase point for the rear door. On some vehicles, this can actually open the door. In this case, the vertical spread did not open the door, but it did provide a large purchase point in order to get the tips of the spreaders in. I want to continue to force the door down and away from the vehicle to gain access. At times, a hose strap can be used to secure the vehicle. A cut is being made at the B-post rocker channel junction. A relief cut is all that's necessary. While making the top cut, you want to avoid any components regarding the seat belt, as these are usually hardened and can be difficult to cut. If you do encounter them, you can move upwards and avoid those components. Once the bees post has been isolated, you will take the spreaders, place it at the bottom of the rocker channel and the bottom corner of the door. By forcing this, you're going to tear the bee post away from the vehicle. Sometimes it is necessary to make a small cut, either with a sawzall or the cutters, and separate any remaining sheet metal that's pulling away. Cutting the door hinges will remove the door assembly 
from the rest of the vehicle. This is not always necessary. As you can see, you can gain access without removing those. Removing the B post as well as the front and rear doors allows you a large space in order to remove the victim from the vehicle. This both maintains a better working area as well as being able to provide better patient care. While approaching this vehicle, it is noted based on the year and the type of accident that it could possibly have a side curtain airbag. In scanning the vehicle, he's making attempts to locate and see any components of this airbag system. Once he has located the wiring, it is determined that he's going to cut the wiring in order to secure them. While he does this, another member is making sure that people are staying clear of the deployment zones. This is being done on both sides of the vehicle. Once the airbags are secured and the wiring has been disabled, you are now clear to remove the roof. Once the airbag has been secured, it is determined that we need to remove the roof. Sometimes in rollovers, the roof can be smashed to the point where you need to gain access to help protect airways or provide other care. Using the spreaders in order to secure the roof or gain that space is an important step in providing good patient care. It has been found to take the sawzall and cut the most difficult post first. While the sawzall is being used for the larger post, the cutters can be used to cut some of the smaller posts. While you're cutting the posts, it is important to avoid the airbags or any of their components. Here, he's cutting on the A post in a location to avoid the airbag components. While the spreader is being used to stabilize, the final cuts are going to be made closest to the point of stabilization. In doing so, we are making sure that all personnel are, that are available are in place to help remove the roof. Clear out any trip hazards and communicate the direction and location that you're going to remove the roof to. Once the final cut has been made, ensure that the personnel in place are ready and able to remove the roof to its final spot. The more hands you have available to help remove this roof, the better. Utilize all personnel available to help remove the roof to a location that's not going to be in the way of other operations. These five videos you just watched represent a small portion of the extrication program. Future programs will be posted to keep pace with these dynamic responses.